So um, as you all know, um, CAVI, it is the Center of Agriculture and Bioscience International. It's not for profit organization. And, actually, and it's a mission um, how to um, lose less and feed more. Uh, so how we could lose less of the crops and make the maximum of our crops output and feed more people around the world. We mainly use our scientific expertise um, to solve problems in the agriculture and environment. So we address this um, food security through science and information and communication. Um, which, it has been established in 1910 by a United Nations Treaty um, and focuses on environment and agriculture, owned by 48 member countries. And there are different countries, um, as you can see here, developing and developed nations. Um, we, don't, we don't believe in differences between nations and that all nations are equals and we're uh, we have developing and developed nations. Science needs to be diffused throughout with no barriers. Uh, here are our um, um, offices. Um, you could see we are in Europe, in the UK, in Switzerland, in Asia, Pakistan, in India, Malaysia, in Africa as well. Um, we have two main big parts, or three really. International development, where we do a lot of uh, international development work and programs. And we do um, publishing, which we are talking about now. So international development, we work with extension workers, with ministries of agriculture and many organizations around the world to help farmers on the ground with practical um, expertise and skills. And publishing, uh, where we help, um, we're going to show you what we really work in the publishing. And microbial services, uh, where we have center to help people in, um, in the microbial uh, uh, information. Um, in terms, um, CABI is really unique because um, where it has a lot of publishing content, but also it has a lot of practical experience from the ground, and we believe that we are the bridge between the farmers and extension workers and the scientists who publish and write books and journals and content. So we have a lot of different type from databases, ebooks, uh, print and digital. We have open access content. We also have e-link. So the books, um, we have compendium, we have online resources, and our, um, as you know, it's been established since 1910, so historic scientific research is important in content and data that we have in our content. Um, so we publish around 70 books a year, and we have now uh, almost a thousand books. We also have the CAP Academy, which is mainly the e-learning part of CAP. And mainly now we have um, um, two courses, one is called Crop Pest Diagnosis and one called Crop Pest Management. Um, those are the e-learning uh, content. We also have the databases. And as you can see, we have a lot of journals content from preceding great literature, books, chapters, and so on. And these are the subjects that we cover in our content development. So we have animal sciences, plant sciences, forestry, aquatic sciences, environmental sciences, food sciences, human sciences, and tourism. And every of these main big major subject, we have sub subjects, and they are spread like this. So in animal science, you could see dairy sciences, animal nutrition, uh, veterinary mycology, and so on. Uh, plant sciences the same. We've got plant pests, we've got horticulture, plant nutrition, and product. Forestry, as you all know, so this is some um, sub subjects are covered, and you could find a lot of different records, journals, and abstracts. Aquatic sciences, of course, the fishery and aquatic world, animals and plants. Environmental sciences, climate, climate change, biofuel, invasive species, water resources, and so on. Food sciences, food chemistry, production, safety, uh, obesity, and so on. Sciences, tourism, and we really focus a lot of, on ecotourism and sustainable tourism. And you can see here again, we welcome a lot of good content from different parts of the world. As you could see, uh, we're covering the, the, the most of the part, but uh, but we still have a large amounts coming from Europe and North America. Uh, this is my presentation. I tried to be quick. Uh, so it's a, a, it's a quick presentation of Kabi, Kabi who is hosting uh, this uh, 
um, webinar for you. Uh, we're going to have another webinar this afternoon, which is hosted by um, Dr. Uh, Philippa Benson, uh, which is a very big, high caliber in the editorial world. And again, today is uh, hosted by Dr. Saeed, um, graduated um, his uh, PhD from North Carolina University. So we'd like to thank him again for uh, giving all the time to us, for us. Um, and, and I give him the microphone to proceed with this uh, lovely and exciting, different type of presentation away from the navigation of and how to publish. Over to you, Dr. Say. Um, thank you so much, uh, Brahim, for the nice and uh, uh, quick uh, presentation, which uh, makes me a little bit jealous. Uh, and I'll, uh, I'll try to copy you if, uh, if, I can, if I could. So I would like to welcome you all to, uh, to our uh, series on writing agricultural uh, grant proposals. Uh, this uh, series is uh, intended for uh, uh, early career scientists and uh, faculty members, and uh, also uh, postdocs and graduate students who are interested in learning how to, uh, how to write grant proposals. Uh, so if you, uh, if you are in that stage of, uh, of your career, uh, I hope you will uh, 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 hear uh, some of, uh, some of uh, the advices uh, that we will share with you. Uh, if you are a little bit ahead uh, of that in your career, probably it's, uh, it's your turn to share some of your insights uh, with us. Uh, we would like to say, uh, yes, Brahim. I uh, just wanted to, before you start, people started to write their names as usual and their emails. Just would like to tell them, you don't have to write anymore because you've been asked to put all your details when you started. So yeah. you have to write your emails from now on. Uh, we figured out a way on Zoom. So you can get registered once you, you know, log in. There's no way for you to log in if you didn't register when you came in. So there is no need to write anything now. Thank you. Sorry about this. Uh, that's great, Rahim. Thank you so much. That uh, will save them some time and that will, uh, uh, will be uh, more efficient for us uh, from now on. Uh, that's that's a very good uh, uh, move, and I uh, probably it's uh, it's my turn to learn that from you guys for my local training uh, training here too. Uh, great, so no need uh, no need to write your uh, your information in the chat section. That was uh, that was the announcement. Uh, great, uh, so uh, this series is uh, is one of uh, closest to my heart, to be honest with you, uh, because it uh, it takes on uh, one of the big challenges for early uh, career scientists and uh, faculty. Um, without fund, you cannot run your, uh, your uh, program. And uh, early on, especially in developing uh, countries, it's, it's tough uh, to start your career without a startup fund. And at the same time, if you don't have uh, project funding. Uh, that's why we decided to, uh, to offer these uh, uh, this series uh, of, of, uh, of workshops. Uh, as usual, we break uh, things down into smaller steps and uh, we think about them uh, deeply and then we share our insights together uh, to make sure that we uh, have enough courage and enough power and enough motivation uh, to, take in, uh, to take on smaller pieces instead of looking at the big thing and uh, get you know, uh, frustrated and maybe disencouraged uh, to do it. So we broke this series down into four uh, sessions, uh, one session a week. Uh, this week uh, and now we are uh, going to discuss how to select uh, the call that you're going to apply for and how to uh, do your proposal alignment, how to align uh, your proposal with the call that you have, uh, you have selected. Uh, next time it's going to be writing a compelling research section. Uh, after that, it's going to be preparing budget and goal chart and the project management plan. And the last session is going to be devoted to uh, submission, review, uh, contracting, and getting, uh, and getting funded. Uh, because this is the first session, I'm going to try to cover uh, all pieces uh, with you guys, um, just to uh, give you more details about this. Uh, so we heard from uh, Brahim about uh, CABI and all the stuff. Um, uh, the nice uh, uh, background he shared with us about Cabi. Uh, so today's session we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna talk about why why we should apply for grants, uh, how we select the call, and how we do the proposal alignment. Uh, the next session is gonna be the research background uh, and how to 
uh, convince people from the first glance uh, with your project, uh, the research objectives and how to connect them to the background or how to use the background as a, as a logical introduction to the objective and then the research approach and how uh, it should be in harmony with uh, all the components. Um, and the, the, the third session where we will discuss uh, preparing budget, uh, we will share some uh, detailed and practical uh, advices. Um, we will uh, discuss the gun chart, what it means and how to prepare it. And then the project management plan and how to show uh, your command uh, of your project uh, via, the, uh, via a very robust and uh, strong uh, project management plan. Uh, the last session, we're going to uh, put the last pieces in the proposal, which is the project outcomes and impacts. Uh, we will discuss the submission and review process if you get a chance to do some review of your, uh, of your project. Uh, and then uh, contracting and getting funded and what uh, you should be aware of in the contracting phase, um, which is something that you should be aware of early on, even before you, uh, you start uh, writing your proposal. Uh, so this is a this is the uh, the entire journey just to uh, to to help you decide if you uh, guys want to continue uh, on the next sessions, which is something that we will love uh, to have. So uh, today we will talk about uh, call selection and proposal alignment, which is the first step. Um, we'll take take a look about uh, take a look at the uh, the why grants. Uh, we will see why we should uh, apply for grants. We have some uh, professional reasons and there is also some uh, financial reasons too. So why grants? Grants uh, typically come with, um, especially in, in, in developing countries with uh, incentive, meaning that you get additional income when you uh, apply for uh, for a grant. Uh, once you receive uh, the, uh, the, the project's fund, uh, then probably you receive additional fund too. Uh, this is an example from one of the leading funding agencies uh, here in Egypt. Uh, you know, uh, it, the, the pay scale, the monthly pay scale is uh, relevant to the position and the time spent on the project. Uh, so shortly, depending on the amount of time you spend on the project, you could ask for additional, uh, additional income, um, which, is, which is very important and very uh, supportive, especially in developing countries where the uh, the, the faculty salaries uh, are not are not high enough to begin uh, to begin with. Um, besides the financial reason, which was uh, my my pick for the first choice, uh, there are a lot of the uh, professional reasons. So. Um, if, if you are uh, a graduate student who is seeking postdoc positions, uh, be aware of that, uh, you know, uh, proposal writing and submission is expected uh, as one of your uh, to-dos as a postdoc uh, in any lab. So when you, when you uh, move from the PhD stage into the postdoc position, uh, expect that you will be asked to participate uh, or maybe sometimes to lead uh, on writing uh, grant proposals. Um, and it's, it's not a secret, you know, you, you get that with the congratulations, you know. <laughs> congratulations, here is what we need you to do <laughs> uh, right away. Uh, also, if you are a postdoc and you are uh, trying uh, or seeking a faculty position, um, expect that you will need to show um, evidence of commitment to seek uh, and potential to obtain uh, funding uh, for your project because that's how how um, you know uh, the graduate studies uh, world work you get you receive funding and then you host PhD students and master's students and and postdocs and and you run the lab and you run the lab and uh, universities would love to have someone who is a standalone person who is uh, independent and who can run the lab on external funding so they don't have to worry about uh, funding uh, funding the project and uh, th that will make any funding they provide um, give them an edge and that fund could be used 
uh, for uh, making their programs more unique and more attractive uh, to, to high quality uh, graduate students because you know the basic uh, uh, research side is already covered uh, by external uh, external funding so this is one of the uh, call one of, one of the um, calls for uh, faculty positions I think it was uh, California Davis uh, and as you see you know evidence some something clear that uh, has been submitted before commitment that means you don't apply for one uh, call and if you don't get it you uh, you give up no you you need to show commitment uh, and also potential to obtain. So if you have been uh, shortlisted, this is something that probably you will need to show uh, in, in your application for, uh, for, such, uh, for such position. Um, there is also building uh, the research capacity. If, if you wanna uh, build research capacity, there are specific calls for building, uh, for building capacity. Uh, for example, this is one from the SDDF, uh, Science uh, Development, Science and Technology Development uh, Fund uh, here in Egypt. So they, they, they provide specific funds for uh, building research capacity. And uh, I'm sure everywhere there are similar, similar types of, uh, of funding too. So if, if, if you are trying to build your own lab, to build uh, more infrastructure for your uh, for expanding or uh, sustaining your research, um, well, funding is uh, is your way to do so. If you would like to support uh, your current research, you need uh, additional chemicals, you need uh, to run more analysis that you have not uh, been aware of when you started your, your project um, and you have not included it in, in your uh, previous, uh, previous grants then um, you can you can seek additional fund just to support current research uh, and that could be um, could be offered for you know uh, early career scientists and um, you know um, experienced uh, faculty uh, who are uh, advancing their careers too um, there are uh, there are also uh, grants for supporting graduate students uh, there are funds for, uh, for, for uh, master students, for PhD students. Uh, so if you would like to have a graduate student and you don't have fund, uh, probably work with one of those students uh, and to, to receive some support uh, fund supporting, uh, their, uh, supporting their research. Uh, so it, it's, it's, it's very good, uh, it's, it's very good option too. Um, and again, uh, applying, uh, for fund uh, is is your way to go uh, to do so. Uh, if if you would like to travel and uh, you don't have or maybe your institution does not uh, support uh, traveling um, uh, on their budget, then you can use uh, the grant uh, funds to, uh, to 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 cover that. If you would like you if you would like personally. Uh, to participate in conferences, or maybe you want your students to participate in conferences, uh, you could include that in, in, your, uh, in your grants. Um, so that means you and or your students could, uh, could participate. So they give uh, like tickets and um, like uh, international and domestic, and uh, uh, sometimes they pay also for, uh, for uh, like the visa and, and, and related, you know, uh, related uh, uh, costs. Uh, you just need to justify that in 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 your uh, in your application uh, or in your uh, proposal. So again, funding uh, and and applying for grants uh, so far seems to be <laughs> the solution for 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 nearly all uh, all uh, all our problems as uh, as early career faculties. Um, you. Could could also seek funding for uh, scientific events you would like to organize, uh, and and in this case, you, th there might be some small grants for uh, for, for early career um, uh, scientists, uh, or maybe uh, um, uh, even for for youth, uh, maybe um, TAs and and graduate students they can also apply for the same thing. They want to do a workshop uh, as, a, as an outreach activity or 
um, or an extension activity, they can they can seek fund for that. And you personally, uh, as a faculty a faculty member, you could do that. You could do that too. Um, and and again, these are two examples of of similar type of funding uh, also offered by the SDDF. And you could see that you know um, you, these things are offered probably annually or biannually too. Um, so you could organize scientific events, workshops, uh, you know, um, symposia, any, anything you would like to, uh, scientific event, any scientific event you would like to host, uh, or maybe um, a conference, you, you, could, you could seek fund for that too. Uh, you would like to publish in an elite uh, international journal, maybe an open access one uh, that will help you uh, and help your research to reach to more readers uh, and then maybe yield more citation and give you more prominence in your field. Uh, but you don't have the, the, um, the fee, the publication fee or the uh, processing fee that the journals uh, seek. Well, you can, you, can, uh, you can cover that uh, from uh, your uh, grants. Uh, so you could, you could include that in, in your uh, proposal and get, uh, and get appropriate funding. Uh, so for example, if you would like to publish in CABI's open access uh, journal, CABI Agriculture and Bioscience, um, uh, and uh, you know, enjoy the, uh, the rapid publication uh, speed and uh, the global orientation and uh, having your uh, publication published with CABI with the global reach, uh, then you can include the, the you know the publication fee in your grants, and that will be uh, that will be covered uh, for you. And actually, most of most of the funding uh, agencies uh, require uh, international publication, and sometimes they require it at a certain. Uh, level of quality of journals uh, in terms of impact factor or, uh, or the uh, quartile, uh, the quartile number of, uh, uh, for the journal. So again, even for publication, you know, <laughs> uh, that could be covered for you too. Uh, if you are seeking international collaboration, um, uh, for example, here in Egypt, uh, uh, there are bilateral collaboration that is covered from that same uh, uh, you know, funding agency, you, there is Egypt, France, Egypt, Japan, Egypt, United States, um, you know, even um, multi-continental uh, projects uh, or uh, intercontinental pro projects too. Uh, so uh, there are a lot of opportunities for the international publication via applying for grants um, collaboratively uh, or, in, or, uh, or in collaboration uh, between scientists at, uh, at different countries. Um, and and, and in, fact, in fact, now there is an Egypt-China call that is, uh, that is open and, uh, for people to apply. Uh, so uh, shortly, if, if you are trying uh, to establish an international collaboration or to sustain and continue an established international collaboration, or if you would like, uh, if you are a returning faculty from abroad and you're trying to connect your students and your lab with your uh, colleagues abroad, and you want to put your lab in active uh, interaction with those uh, international uh, teams, well, again and again and again, uh, applying for grants is, uh, is, your, uh, is your way to go. Um, if you have an idea and uh, it is risky, um, there are some funds that are specifically devoted for high risk uh, technology development uh, to encourage youth and early career faculty to, um, you know, uh, to, to, to think freely, to think freely and, and to um, follow uh, their ideas wherever they take them um, without having to worry too much about the risk uh, of uh, technology development. Um, and and those, those calls specifically, um, uh, you know, indicate 
the, the need for the technology development risk for the proposal to be approved. So uh, if, if, you, if, if you are disencouraged to apply for grant for an idea because it involves a lot of risk, then there are calls specifically for you. Um, so there is, there is a lot of opportunities um, you could achieve uh, both uh, financially and professionally uh, by, uh, by, receiving, uh, by receiving grants, applying and uh, receiving uh, grants. Uh, so, uh, do we have any questions so far? Um, do we have any questions so far? Okay, I don't see any in, in the chat section. Okay, that means we, uh, we can uh, speed up and maybe uh, copy what Brahim did, what Brahim did for us. Um, and again, for those who are still writing their names and their institution affiliation, in the chat section uh, no need for that uh, anymore thank you uh, all so much okay so uh, with all these motivations that we have discussed uh, on um, on uh, why we should apply uh, for uh, for grants uh, now I think we have we have our batteries charged to see how we actually uh, go about the uh, the application uh, we will talk about the call selection, how to call, how to select the call that you will apply for. Uh, because once you're funded, you're, you're stuck with the call until you, with, with the project until you finish it. Uh, so we'll discuss the announcement schedule, the objectives, the eligibility requirements, and the proposal guidelines, and how we should pay close attention to all these four, you know, uh, items when we uh, select, um, when we select a call. So it's it's a big question i know how to select a grant call first you need to be aware of the uh, announcement schedule uh, for calls because once they are open they will soon be closed <laughs> so um april may april may so it's like a month and it's gone your opportunity is gone in one month and as you will see when, uh, when we talk about writing and discuss writing the proposal, there is a lot of details that takes a lot of thinking uh, and a lot of coordination and a lot of the high insight. Uh, and, you know, doing so in a very limited time uh, uh, will not uh, put you in a competitive, uh, in a competitive uh, adv advantage. And that means you need to prepare ahead. And uh, if you want to prepare ahead, you need to be aware of the announcement schedule and you need to start early, to start early, to get ready early, early on. Uh, and maybe once the uh, call is announced, you finalize your, your project, you don't start from scratch. Uh, and that means you need something that is uh, sustainable, uh, something that is continuous, something that is uh, repeated um, frequently um, um, and, and you know, uh, or at least you, you, you have some expectations uh, on, uh, on when uh, this kind of call will be, uh, will be opened. So prepare ahead. And as we said, you know, you need, you need consistency. You need consistency. So uh, you, you need something like like this one it is it is offered every year and now it's offered twice a year so if you prepare for the first cycle and you don't get it then you next year you will have another one uh, and the year the year after you will have another one and if you look at the objectives you want a call that um seeks funding people like you seeks funding uh, projects like yours. So try to find the, the, the call that actually has the sustainability, as we talked before, and also that has um, the consistent objectives uh, of funding people uh, like you. Uh, for example, the, uh, the reintegration grants here in Egypt, it's something like the, the startup for early career faculty. The only difference, it's, it's offered you know, uh, competitively, it's not offered for everyone like, like uh, in, in, in the Western uh, universities where every 
starting faculty receives a startup fund. Uh, and that's designed for applying, um, you know, faculty uh, members who receive their PhDs uh, from abroad and they want to go back and to uh, uh, stay in Egypt. And as you see, this is something that is consistent. Uh, it, the, the, the objective is consistent, so the frequent, it is frequent. Um, it, so it comes every, every year and now it's twice a year. The objective does not change, so it's every time it seeks people who receive their PhDs from abroad and who were who are returning uh, and want to uh, to establish their own lab and you, uh, their own group uh, in their home uh, institutions. Uh, so if 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 someone is is a, is a, is is um, an early career faculty who received the PhD from abroad, then applying for this this uh, call makes a lot more sense than applying to something that is open for all faculty uh, faculty groups and by um, by focusing your power and energy towards a call like this you know and th the likelihood of receiving fund and and uh, for succeeding uh, gets higher uh, we also uh, when we select the grant uh, call we need to maximize our eligibility because for eligibility if, if if you lose one you're out if you lose one the eligibility criteria if you, if you lose one you're out it must look uh, the principal investigator or the returning researcher uh, it's the eligibility criteria for the previous call that we talked about uh, must be less than 40 years old. So if you lose one, you're out. Um, and again, it's the returning faculty who received the PhD from abroad. Uh, the PhD within the past three years, so you have a window of three years that you have a, in which you have a competitive advantage uh, to apply for such call. Um, uh, published internationally, um, uh, obtain uh, like three papers in the most cited internationally you know journals so uh, these are the, the, the eligibility criteria that we need to put our eyes on and uh, we need to be aware of um, so every every item here is a must so you need the maximum uh, anything below the maximum is not is not enough so you need to find a call that actually you meet the maximum eligibility criteria and you surpass it with some um, competitiveness advantage uh, to be able to, to achieve it. Um, also, we need uh, to look for the uh, proposal guidelines uh, to see what they are seeking. Generally, uh, they are seeking high quality and innovation. They are seeking applicability and they are seeking impact. And you try to find something that you can uh, bring all these um, evaluation criteria about and actually you would like to have some ad, uh, com li like some advantage when it comes to the evaluation criteria. So for the uh, eligibility requirements, you need to have them all. For the, uh, the um, evaluation criteria, you need to have a competitiveness advantage. And once you find that call, it's, it's your chance. That means you have more, more chances of receiving funding from that call comparing to any other calls. And that means if you put your energy in this direction, uh, the likelihood of you being selected is, is much, 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 uh, much higher. Uh, so uh, any, any questions so far? Any questions so far, verbally or written in the chat section? Uh, I still see names written in the chat sections and you know, uh, you, you, no need, no more need for that. Uh, we already have your uh, your information. Thank you so much. Uh, any question? Do you guys have any questions or any comments?
Well, that means you are going to help me be as fast as Ibrahim. Uh, thank you. Uh, and again, no need to write your, uh, your information in the chat section. We already have your information. Uh, great. So now we, we know why we should apply uh, for grants, and we know how we should select the call that we will apply for. Uh, now let's take a look at how actually uh, we could uh, align our ideas um, and our proposal with the call that we have, uh, we have selected. How we select uh, an appropriate topic, how we select um, um, an appropriate title, uh, how we select the appropriate research team and um, how we appropriately write the proposal abstract, because these are um, key components on, uh, you know, painting uh, the picture of your proposal in the evaluator's mind. Uh, these are the things that are gonna uh, that are gonna draw your uh, uh, that are gonna draw the the, the first impressions about uh, your proposals. Uh, your proposal in the reviewer's mind. Let's take, let's take a look at them and try to answer this, uh, this question. How to align your proposal with the call that you have selected? Uh, first, we need to, uh, to select uh, an appropriate research topic, which means we need to select a topic they want to fund. So if, if you have a very good idea, but you are um, presenting it uh, or submitting it to a call that actually is not trying to fund this type of ideas, uh, no matter how bright your idea is, it's not going to be accepted, uh, plain and simple. So what you need to do is to find an idea that actually is an idea that call is trying to fund. So choose the topic they want to fund. How, how are we going to know that? Well, take a look at their evaluation criteria. This is your treasure trove. This is your treasure trove. This what tells you how to set yourself apart from the crowd uh, when it comes to uh, that, well, the evaluation uh, of your research, uh, of, of your research uh, project. If we take a look at, at, at this call, they, they look uh, for things scientific, technological, innovative, of high quality, all capital letters, you know, quality. So they need something of high quality. Um, um, it must provide some novelty, so quality, novelty. Uh, so it, it, it must be of that, of that level. It must be of that level. So don't waste your time uh, with uh, repeated ideas that are not are not going to take uh, are not going to take us uh, take us far. Uh, try to come up with something that is of high quality and uh, and novel. And here they talk about the writing and how, how the quality of the writing is, but uh, we'll focus on, on the topic itself. So you need a novel topic of high, uh, of high quality. You need a topic that will uh, most likely uh, yield some applicable results or applications. So you need something that will have implications, applications, things, are going to change uh, after you uh, you conduct your uh, your project. Uh, you should show that uh, this topic actually has some likelihood, some high likelihood of yielding um, outcomes that will be implemented um, in real life. They also want topics with high impacts, with high impacts. And by impact here, they could be you no know, uh, sociological, uh, economical, uh, or both. And again, you know, uh, you would love, uh, you should try to offer something that somehow uh, could provide some um, economic impact uh, 
Um, and we will talk about how to show that economic impact in, uh, in a moment. But don't try, don't try from things that have some uh, social impacts because we will talk now about how to, um, um, how, to tron uh, how to translate the social impacts into economic ones and show that actually those social impacts are socio-economic impacts not just social impacts. And we, we will talk uh, about that with, with some examples in a moment. Um, after, after selecting um, the appropriate topic, uh, you will need to spend some quite some time thinking about the uh, proposal title. Uh, and when you think about the proposal title, think as a reviewer. Think as uh, a leader of that selection committee, you know, uh, what exactly do you think they will want to fund? And try to phrase your title uh, of, your pro of your proposal in such a way that it appeals to them. And actually, I, I, I might advise you to make your title uh, rejection proof. You should try to find a rejection proof title, which means it's very good in such a way that they will think twice before, uh, before they reject it. Uh, so uh, how, how can I make, um, how, how can I make the, my title rejection proof? Well, I'll give you an example. Uh, in Egypt, uh, here, we, we uh, import a lot of wheat, a lot of wheat. Um, and so we are the world's top <laughs> importer of wheat. And believe me, this is not something that we are, uh, that we are proud of. Um, and, and we, as, as, a, as a country and as a nation, we really need to cut the gap uh, to increase the local production. And we feel ashamed by that. That's why, you know, uh, achieving um, self-sufficiency of wheat uh, has been, you know, Egypt's, um, let's say, largest agricultural objective for, for, for a long, long, long time. So if, if you write something on wheat and you relate that to wheat production and that gap between uh, the production and the consumption and self-sufficiency, uh, you makes it harder for for the committee to reject, right? Because yes, this is this is a very hot topic, and actually, they will not reject your proposal uh, with that title unless it is actually uh, not good. Uh, what I mean by this is when you select such topic or such title, uh, you make your uh, proposal uh, um, rejection proof based only on title. So they're not going to look at the title and they will say, nay, it's not something that we are interested on. No, when they look at that title, they will, oh my God, that's a, that's a very hot topic. Uh, let's hope that the proposal is up to that level, you know. Uh, so that changes the mood and that changes your chances too. Uh, try to, to show the quality of the project, it is a high quality, it is novel, that needs to be clear in the title. Uh, you need to show some sort of applicability in the title. You need to show some sort of impact in the title. So these are the criteria, the three main criteria. Uh, try to come up with a title that show all three. Uh, that, that, makes, that makes things uh, much more uh, much more, you know, um, um, likely for you uh, to be selected. Uh, don't make it a very long one, but don't make it too short in such a way that you drop any of these three uh, somehow. Uh, I'll, I'll give you an example here. Um, uh, we talked about wheat and Egypt and, and, and how it is important. Uh, the, the, we, we submitted a, a project uh, proposal on 
uh, introducing ozone tolerance of wheat to increase Egypt's production um, of, uh, of wheat. You know, it, it, when you say that, introduce something that means novelty and quality, right? Introduce, that means you are going to put something, introduce something that has not been here before. That directly shows novelty and quality. Just one word. Uh, introduction of. Just, just one word it is, is, uh, is showing that. Um, and then you, you put the trait, also on tolerance, and then you say to increase. Um, so that, that there is applicability here. Uh, uh, wheat production in Egypt, that means an impact. And, and the sentence is not, is not, is not long, you know. It's, it's still short, but you have been able to put all three components all together uh, up on that title, up on that title. And believe me, if this proposal was to be rejected and uh, someone um, in the leadership uh, took a look at the rejected uh, proposal uh, proposals list and saw that title, I believe probably they will go back and double check that. Are, are we really rejecting a project <laughs> uh, trying to do that? So th that's the type of, uh, of the titles that we are uh, advising you to, uh, to use. The research team, uh, you need to put a qualified research team, a qualified research team, which is the quality. Uh, you can also try to, sh to, uh, to show novelty in the research team by probably establishing a, a cluster across different uh, colleges uh, where people with different expertise come together for the first time. Uh, people from the Faculty of Agriculture, people from the Faculty of Science, people, people from uh, maybe um, uh, the pharma, uh, pharmaceutical side, you know, the quality means people are qualified. They have the qualifications to do the work. And the novelty is probably you are putting uh, human resources together in such a way that uh, have not been um, used uh, together uh, before. Um, and and uh, the, the, the applicability. So people that you put in the team, they are actually are available to work and to do the job. So don't put someone who uh, is on like 10 projects. He's not, he's not going to be able to, to join the team. Uh, don't uh, put someone who is abroad and cannot participate in the work remotely um, because it's, it's, not, it's not applicable. And also you need to show some impact by uh, the research team, some impact, meaning that when you put that team together, you will have um, delivered some impact that was not available without bringing this team, uh, this team together. So when you, when you think of new ways of team structures like clusters, like uh, interdisciplinary uh, teams, uh, you, you actually bring quality, you bring novelty, uh, applicability, and impacts all at the same, uh, at the same time. And uh, one thing that people um, uh, or reviewers typically like to see is the multi-generational nature of research teams in such a way that there are consultants who are uh, aware and, and, and have a lot of experience on how to deal with uh, the administrative side of, of project management um, and, and also who have uh, a lot of uh, scientific scientific experiences to share, uh, like mid-career faculties who are in between uh, those and the early career faculties and, and TAs and PhD students and sometimes undergraduate students. And the more uh, generations you include in your research team, uh, the better. So they, they actually love uh, to see that. Um, th there are two ways of impact. Uh, there is the impact uh, the external impact that the research team will uh, will have and there is also the impact of working in a team on that team itself uh, and you can you can show that if you say okay uh, our research team will include undergraduate students they will 
uh, gain experience on conducting science by interacting with, uh, you know, uh, faculty of all career stages. That's, that's an impact on a research team member. So you can, you can use both uh, external impact, the external impact that will uh, be delivered by the research team and also the impact on the research team themselves. Um, and, and, and these, these are, uh, are two sides that you actually can, uh, you actually can show. Great, great. So that's, uh, that's how to uh, put together a qualified team. Um, uh, now let's move on to the, um, the uh, proposal abstract. And the proposal abstract is, is a very, um, key component uh, of your proposal because this will be the most read piece of your proposal. Uh, people uh, from all at, at, at every stage of the evaluation process uh, from all disciplines will be reading that, that abstract. Uh, so make sure that is actually very well written. And by very well written, we mean it needs to effectively answer all the questions that has to be answered uh, by, uh, by an abstract, which is why? Why this topic? Why this research team? Why now? What are you trying to, uh, to deliver and why it is important and how it's gonna solve the problem? All the questions that you get, and 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 what next? What after we achieve this this uh, these results? What 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 sort of impact will these results have uh, on this uh, on this particular uh, particular area? Uh, you need to show the quality and novelty. Again, you need to show the applicability, and you need to show the impact. And here, I urge you, I urge you to use money, calculate things, put them in dollars, calculate them. If, if you don't have a, a calculation, estimate them logically, estimate them and put money there because you know, they are gonna pay money to fund the grant, uh, to fund the, the, the project. And they, believe me, they expect this money to pay uh, to pay back. So they treat it as uh, an investment and they will look on how big is the return on investment is from your, uh, from your project. So the more you show it in numbers, uh, the better, you know, if you, if you tell any, anyone um, about some, <laughs> some amount of money, they will understand that even the, the children, even the kids, you know, they know what is big, what is small, um, what, what buys less and what buys more. So even, even you know, even the, the kids understand that. So um, if, if, if you speak science, scientists will understand you. Uh, if you speak sociology, sociologists will understand you. If you speak economics, um, economists will understand you. But if you put things in, in, in dollars, everyone, believe me, everyone uh, will have a clear idea about how big or small the impact of your, uh, of your project is. Uh, so uh, this, this is the last piece of, uh, of, uh, of you know, uh, how to align uh, your proposal uh, with uh, a call. And uh, next time we'll talk uh, in details about, you know, uh, all the pieces and components uh, of, uh, of the project. Uh, any question? Any question? Note or comment? Any question, note or comment? Oh, you guys are a, are a quiet group. Uh, you guys are a quiet group. Nice, nice. Uh, so, with this, I think I, uh, I made it uh, to the end of, uh, of our session. Uh, that was uh, very quick and, uh, and short, Brahim. So, uh, I think you, uh, you, 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 are, uh, you are helping me a lot here. 
Thank you, Sayed, um, for this first um, session. Um, how many sessions do we have more for this? Three, um, three more. Proposal? I'm sorry? Three more. Okay, we have three more every Tuesday until the 1st of December. So please um, continue coming to your session. Uh, we'll link for another exciting session today is understanding and avoiding plagiarism. Um, I've sent you the, the, the link where to register. You don't have to register if you don't want to use the link and come along. Um, and that's it for today. Uh, Abraham, I have a question. One, uh, one question in the chat section, if, you, uh, if I may. Uh-huh. Of course. Uh, um, uh, okay, so uh, where can we find calls? Well, that's a very good question, depending on where you are. Uh, uh, and uh, if, if you don't know where to find calls, uh, it is where the experience matters. Uh, so uh, probably uh, discuss that with um, uh, a more senior faculty member in your department uh, or in your college. Uh, ask them where, where, do, where do they get their fund? And if you want to get funded, uh, where do they suggest you to start? Um, and, and again, there are different types of, of fundings. There are the governmental fundings, there are the institutional fundings, and there is also the international uh, funding uh, resources too. And in your um, in your uh, in, in your uh, home country and in your home institution, uh, things are going to differ from one place uh, one place to another. Uh, for example, here in Egypt, we have uh, like three. Uh, um, uh, like two or three main uh, funding agencies for uh, for scientific uh, projects, uh, governmental uh, funding agencies. I mean, uh, uh, we we have also being part of the Mediterranean area. Uh, there is a lot of uh, um, like three or four main Mediterranean uh, area um, uh, funding sources that we uh, here in Egypt. Uh, tend to uh, apply for a lot. Uh, so if, if you talk to someone who uh, is a, a, a little bit ahead in the career, uh, they, will, they will share uh, the best answer to your question because it's going to come from someone who is near to you, uh, who is around you, uh, and probably who uh, have uh, the, same, uh, the same situation uh, or had the same situation as you probably a few years, uh, three years ago. Um, uh, okay. Uh, uh, there are some uh, some comments on uh, uh, on the previous session. Someone had to leave. That's fine. Um, uh, Rahim, uh, will this be available uh, as a recording? Yes. Yes. It will be on our YouTube channel. You could go. Okay. Great. 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 So uh, for uh, 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 for whoever uh, missed the the session or part of it, uh, I think uh, you can make up uh, by uh, by uh, watching watching the video on uh, Cabby's YouTube uh, YouTube channel. Uh, well, um, I have no other questions, Brahim, in the chat, and I don't see anyone uh, raising their hands for questions or comments. Uh, thank you all so much uh, for uh, for being with us here, and uh, I promise. You will uh, you will like the next session more. It's more hands-on. Uh, it's more practical. So um, please uh, come and join us. Thank you, Dr. Said. Thank you, everyone, for joining. And it's time to say goodbye. And I will see you next time. Have a good day. Bye bye.